The last episode of this series was devastating. I think that's really the only way to put it when you have the best team that I have ever seen fail as hard as I've ever seen a team fail, if you get what I mean. Nothing went right for us in our 24-10 loss in Super Bowl 59 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't pin the blame on any one player in particular, even though Chase Dawson was abysmal. The best O-line in the game struggled defensively. It just wasn't there. Flat out, it just wasn't our day. And everything that could have gone wrong, yeah, it did go wrong. I think that's really the only way to put it. Today, though, we look to move on. We look to move forward, hopefully onward to bigger and better things. It's such... Uh Uh-oh, financial probation warning. You you have ended the season. If this is not corrected before the next deadline, uh, your position will be terminated. Huh. Well, as it turns out, that Super Bowl might be even more important. Because uh, if we don't make $50 million in funds, I might be shit-canned. Well, that's great. That's a whole lot of fun. Oh, good. Weekly awards. Yeah, because we deserve... Two players to be dominated after that last game. Turns out that Super Bowl might have been even more important to us considering what we just read. We look to move on to bigger and better things, but uh, as it turns out, yeah, that, that might not be, that might not even be an option. All these guys are being dropped, of course. Although, in saying that, Paul Richardson really was fairly impressive. Now, Kerry Young. This is, oh shit, oh shit, Carry Young. Uh, I have the cap room to sign him, I just don't have the funds. What's a fair offer to you? 30.9 million total, huh? I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to bring back Carry Young right now. So if he wanted 30.9 million total, what if I offer you... 12 million bucks with no signing bonus. That might have been overkill, but I would rather overkill and then potentially move him and find somebody else. So, hey, fully admit that might have been overkill, but did what I have to do to make sure that we hold on to him. Brian Ridgway, all these other guys can go. I love Trent, but he's 31 at this point and down to a 75, and we can find a new kicker. Not named Will Lutz. The only player I am really concerned about is Isaiah Collins. But I'm going to save some money there. So Kerry Young is back. But financially, because of that gigantic contract to a certain quarterback who choked in the playoffs, yeah, right now, the, the biggest issue would be our funds and trying to sort that out. Now, obviously, the biggest way to potentially do that is going to be certain cost-cutting measures because, yeah, if we can cut player and staff salaries, we might have a better chance. Player bonuses are also going to be pretty big. We might have to tear this team down a little bit just to make sure that we can live to see another day. Now, I'm going to try to clear cap penalties here again and see if that helps. Time will tell. I've already done it once, and it didn't play a major factor. So quickly, let's take a look here at the current situation. Now, we do have, again, some good draft picks. Dawson has the most expensive contract I've ever handed out in a football game. (laughs) By far. But that was the only way to keep him. He's the second best quarterback in the league right now. We can't let go of him. Even though he's that expensive, we just can't. Running back-wise, there's not a ton of money invested there. I mean, Nikhil Harry might have to go. I would prefer not to let go of him. The O-line, we have McIntyre, Landry, Young. I mean, again, it's the best O-line in the game, but now they're all making a ton of money. Clinton Tuck is getting paid a ton. Maybe we move on from Miles Jack to save a bit. William Norris is great, but... He's getting paid a ton as well. This is going to be tough. 
to sort this out. Now, technically, we have cap space. It's just the player bonuses that could end up killing us in the long run. So now, not only am I worried about getting this team back to a Super Bowl, but I'm worried that, uh, yeah, this upcoming season could be our last. We can't get rid of Chase Dawson, or this team doesn't have a hope in hell. We can't really get rid of Nikhil Harry, otherwise this team doesn't have a hope in hell. We could potentially draft some old linemen to save us a little bit. Clinton Tuck's going nowhere. This is this is tough. This is going to be a real tough time for us. I think we'll make trades once we're closer to the draft. Or actually in the draft, because in that way we can see who's available to us. Now, cap room right now, showing us with $5 million. There's not much we can do there. I mean, obviously we're set in most spots. Which is pretty nice to really not have to worry about it. Wide receiver-wise, there aren't really any major options. Tight end-wise, we're set. Bakhtiari's there, Frederick is there, Martin's there, but obviously we're not concerned with anybody there. Khalil Mack is 34, so obviously not. We're good to go. We don't have to worry about free agency. It's just a question of who we can bring in in the draft. This team's going to be competitive next year no matter what. It's pretty much impossible for them to not be. But... God damn, man. That that loss from the last episode is still just mind-boggling. Like I said, I've never seen a team that good fail that spectacularly. Like, truly a record-setting performance of futility, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Now, kicker and punter-wise, obviously we're looking to find a Will Lutz replacement. Who don't we have scouted here? Let's take a look at Spencer Garrison, just because he's up there. Uh, Alex Samuel, looking like a decent option. Now, we didn't really scout out defensive ends, uh, which is fine. I'm just going to take a look at the top options left in the draft. And we will see what we're dealing with once we get to draft day. So make sure we have all the top guys scouted. Unreal. <laughs> So the funds are looking better though, slowly but surely that number is getting closer to even. But obviously I am a tad bit concerned and I'm thinking here on the fly because if I screw this episode up, I could technically end this series prematurely. I'm trying to think of the best way to handle this is to just like not make any draft picks this year or if I should be moving on from certain players because money wise it's going to be really close we should be okay though now that I look at it with the amount of money that we're bringing in we should be okay by the end of next season it's going to be kind of close though perhaps too close for comfort ultimately so I'll just give you guys a quick look at where the top options went not the best free agent class in the world so we go to the 2025 draft. We have the eighth overall pick. And again, let's take a look at the top of the draft board and see what we have. So quarterback-wise, this isn't the year to take a quarterback anyway, so we're not worried about it. Running back-wise, Shaq McBride. Damn, might be pretty good. I think I like who we have, though, the one-two punch at running back. Shaq McBride, though, he's fast, he's agile, he's strong as a receiving back. Brandon Lusk is a power back, strong, decent agility and speed, but I'd be a little bit worried. I don't think I'm going to trust Shaq McBride. And then again, Lusk is nice, but I think Sheffield might be better. I'm a little bit worried about the, the 40 time and the agility. He's got everything else. Shaq McBride, though, there's a really good chance he's going to be really good. So, you know, we might keep an eye on him. In the second or third round, fullback-wise, we don't really need anybody. I was just kind of intrigued and wanted to take a look. You know, we can pretty much add these guys just in case we decide to take a flyer on a late pick. Wide receiver-wise, Harvey Pemberton. Jesus Christ, yes. 6-1, great jumping, good speed and agility. Honestly, draft Harvey Pemberton, move on from Nikhil Harry if we have to. 
Metcalf is a deep threat. He's not bad in fairness. The good agility, the speed, you know, the 40 time isn't brutal. I think Harvey Pemberton right there is the only safe bet, though. And oftentimes, again, if they're in the red, they're not looking that good. Quentin Gordon, really good speed and agility, good height. I don't hate that. I don't think he'll be amazing, though. George Pilgrim is awful. Awful from a speed and agility perspective. Perspective. Logan Quinn, nope. And D'Angelo Fuller has the agility, but not much else. At 24 years old, Julius Braggs, no. Okay, so not much there. Tight end wise, Alex Samuel. We don't know. Odds are he's going to be amazing, though. Kind of came out of nowhere. But uh, hoping he ends up being good. He'll probably be a very early pick. Keiston Crawford, 32. Yeah, that guy's going to be a beast. That's pretty straightforward. Left guard, Jacoby Westerman. Nope, the reps are a bit too low. Nothing there because we haven't seen enough of Dane Scharf. Right guard and then right tackle, Corbin Lafleur is looking like he's going to be great. And Anthony Yoder should also be pretty good. Might not be the worst decision in the world to get a couple of O-linemen because, you know... We're spending an awful lot of money on our current O-line. An awful lot of money. It's the only way to put it. Spencer Garrison, left edge. Looking pretty good, but not better than who we have. Uh, the reps are alright, the agility's alright. I don't know if I trust him. Lee Joseph, George Brown. I don't know. All three of these guys look like they're going to be relatively solid, but I'm not really interested in drafting them. And on the right-hand side, Sheldon Clements. A little bit more well-rounded. I wouldn't be against it. Colton Burroughs is a little bit too weak, as is Kamari Phillips. Defensive tackle. Let's take a look at Roberts. Eh, kind of... Kyle Copper could be decent, but probably nothing too special. Odds are it'll be a couple of first-round picks, and then we're just going to skip out from there. Because, again, money-wise, it's just such a concern. Josh Vance has the speed, has the agility, decent strength, not bad. Toby Cooper doesn't have the speed, but the agility, the strength, also there from him. Vlad Hutchins, nope. Very much nope. In the middle, Ashley Brooks has the speed and the strength, not so much the agility. And for a middle linebacker, that's pretty much key. And speaking of the complete package, Trayvon Capers not looking all that bad. Sidney Hatch, eh, he's not that bad for a potential late round pick. And Chris Poole, of course, we did let go of that middle linebacker just to play it safe, because obviously money-wise, you know, a depth linebacker spot, that's fine. Connor Wakefield's going to be amazing. That might be the key to this draft. Get Connor Wakefield and move on from Miles Jack. No matter how much I love Miles Jack, Lincoln Dyson is also looking like he's going to be phenomenal, as does Joshua Isaac. So there are three linebackers, top notch linebackers in this draft. And then corner wise, you have Parrish Solomon, who looks amazing as well. Uh, Thurman, I'm not really intrigued. And what about Darius Todman? Hell of a name. Um, that's going to be a no from me. What about Diamond Calhoun? The agility. Yeah, the agility kind of kills that a little bit. Sorry to the diamond, but just not there. And then safety-wise, Russ Marsh. Beast at 23. Matthew Mann. Strength's a little bit weak, but not that bad. Shaq Owens. Not that bad. Floyd Hawthorne. Eh. A little bit behind the pace. And here, Parrish Wynn. Jesus, he's 24, though. That's the unfortunate deal there. What about Casey Briggs? Looking great from Combine. Sanborn, also looking relatively good. Ricky Briggs, also looking pretty good. Casey and Ricky Briggs, huh? And then kicker-wise, I mean, it's not really looking great, but we need to pick up somebody. So... Taking a look here, again, Shaq McBride, if he's in a later round, cool, not a necessity. 
Fullback wise, again, obviously not a necessity. That just could be a late round pick if we wanted to give it a shot. We're looking at Harvey Pemberton. We could be looking at Alex Samuel. There are a couple of good offensive line options. And there are some top-notch linebackers and a top-notch corner as well. So it's kind of tough to decide how we want to go about this here. We're obviously not going to be able to pick up everybody. I just don't know if I want to trade up to get the number one pick just because I'm worried about funds. I think we'll get the best of who's left. Let's do it. The Raiders with the number one pick. Take Spencer Garrison, who was a 78 left end out of Alabama. The Jags, second overall, take Keiston Crawford, 76 left tackle. Carolina at three, goes for Paris Solomon in the corner. He was a 76. Miami at four, took the tight end, Alex Samuel, 74, but you can guarantee he has a good dev pattern. We're going to get one of those linebackers at this rate. Cincy took Will Metcalf. I don't think I can wait. The fact that the fact that that damn uh, linebacker is still there. Harvey Pemberton's still there. There are two linemen that I still really like. But Connor Wakefield's still on the board. And from what I can tell, he is going to be an absolute beast. And then again, there are some very intriguing safeties as well. Detroit, let's talk. Let's talk. Because I don't want to miss out here if I can help it. So let's see what the Lions are dealing with. TJ Hawkinson right now, their top player. So that's sixth overall pick. You're interested in a quarterback. I can't really help you there. You're interested in no line help. I can't really help you there. But you are interested in linebackers. Miles Jack is on a phenomenal contract. He really is. Now might be the time to get rid of him. And honestly, we can look to move on from Jawan Bentley as well, but they don't really want him. Are they interested in Miles Jack? Kind of. How close would that be? They're not interested in Miles Jack. That's interesting. And then safety wise, I wouldn't be against moving on from William Norris getting a safety and moving Ben Monroe back over the corner. If I can move on from Norris, I think I have to. That's just a bit too much money. So we're going to see if we can use Norris here. I'm going to safety net this just in case. I don't think it'll go through if I add in an extra pick, but it's worth being better safe than sorry on that. So yeah, we are going to try to use Norris to acquire the sixth overall pick to bring in that linebacker, and then there's a decent chance again that we move on from Miles Jack. Norris and a third to Detroit for the sixth overall pick. And I can only hope that I'm putting my faith in the right spot, but Connor Wakefield's the guy. Connor Wakefield's looking like the guy. And we can move on and get younger at linebacker if need be. And then hopefully we can still get Harvey Pemberton. There are the two O linemen that we could go for as well to get a little bit younger and a little bit cheaper there. But yeah, Wakefield, Wakefield is just a beast. And then again, it's safety, Russ Marsh, even though he's 23, looks really good, as does Parrish win. Sixth overall pick, we're taking the linebacker, Connor Wakefield, let's go. I'll take it. I mean, 17th in true talent, we get him at six, but a 73 overall hidden dev at 21 years old, not the worst thing in the world. I'll take it. He's not quite as good as I was hoping, but overall I'll take it. And with the seventh pick, Lee Joseph goes off the board. I don't know if this means Nikhil Harry's done, but we're going for the deep threat of the Clemson. We're going with Harvey Pemberton with this next pick. And that was the right choice. He might be 12th in true talent. We get him at eight. But the 22-year-old is a hidden dev 76 overall receiver with ungodly speed and decent height to match with 90 jumping. I don't regret that at all. So two very solid additions that give us the opportunity 
to move on from other players and especially too when you factor in the bonus money those players could come back to haunt us so we have the 14th and the 16th pick left we have O Lyman that we're interested in I don't really think I'm interested in Sheldon Clements what I am interested in is one of the two O Lyman or either Marsh or Wynn as a safety preferably Russell Marsh but we'll see and he's only a year younger so Let's see what we can do here. The Steelers at 9 take Sheldon Clements, 77 right end. Vikings at 10 go for Lincoln Dyson, the linebacker. Bills at 11 took Colton Burroughs, 76, 78, 78 right end. Washington at 12 took Marshawn Isaac at safety. And Philly at 13 goes for Curtis Simpson. So we're going to be making four first-round picks here, which scares me a bit. But we're going to risk it. Actually, shit, I could just trade down. I could trade down and save a little bit of money. Or I could just make sure that I get Russell Marsh. I mean, Parrish Wynn is a beast, though. He's fast, he's strong, he has an unreal vert. And then Russell Marsh. I think we got to go for Parrish Wynn. Like, I know this guy's 24, but he has a fucking 8.0 combine score. And we might be able to get him later on. First round talent, early second round projection. We're going to trade down here. We're going to trade this pick away. And potentially the next one. I might keep the next one, actually. So a second, a fourth, and a seventh. Second, third, and a sixth. Two seconds and a fifth. Or the 32nd overall pick. We'll take that from Cleveland just to make sure that we are still in the first round. The Browns. I can't believe that just happened. They took Russell, uh, Russell Marsh, and he's a 79. And Paris Flowers goes next. So, uh, yeah, guess what? We'll be taking the other guy. And I know he's a year older, but let's hope I didn't just royally screw up by siding with Parrish Wynn. I didn't. Number one in true talent. Get him at 16 overall, 70, or a 16, yeah, 16th overall. He's a 79 overall, hidden dev talent, 24-year-old. Parrish Wynn, welcome aboard. Again, he has wheels for days. Very intrigued to see how he'll do. The downside, of course, being him uh, being 24 years old. Irvin Thurman off the board. The Jets go for the running back. Shaq McBride, it was a 78, so so long to that. Cleveland takes George Brown. Hilarious. Mari Phillips is off the board. Baltimore at 21 takes a Corbin Lefleur. So we need to go talk to the Rams. See if we can trade up, get that other O-lineman, and then potentially move out an O-lineman to avoid having to pay out a decent amount of bonus money. So let's go talk to the LA Rams. Again, the one thing that I'm concerned about is, okay, how... How invested am I getting in terms of all this bonus money that we're picking up? I guess I actually picked up the Cleveland pick from next year, which is fine. Because this team wants an O-lineman. Now, I mean, McIntyre, two years older than Young, but he's also two overall points better. It's got to be... It's got to be McIntyre or Kerry Young. It's got to be. It's going to be Matt McIntyre that we move out, I think. I mean, the sacks allowed are pretty close. The pancakes, that's a tough one. Are they interested in McIntyre? They are. And I'm sure they're going to be interested in Kerry Young. They are. The reason why I'm going to keep Kerry Young is because we know that there's no bonus money involved. <laughs> so we're going to see if we can move Matt McIntyre to the Rams to take an offensive lineman with this pick. And that way we can get a little bit cheaper bit of a risk. We're going to have to give up a pick here to make it happen, which is fine. That'll be the fifth overall pick, or fifth round pick that we have. So there we go. Matt McIntyre is off to Los Angeles. His replacement being selected now is going to be the right tackle, Anthony Yoder out of Texas. Top reps at 21 years old amongst right tackles. Yoder, welcome aboard. 78 overall at 21 years old. Normal dev, which is okay because he's a 78. He's a solid option right out of the gates. He's cheaper than what we had. That's fine. 
I, again, the dev pattern kind of sucks, but it's fine. I'm more than okay with that. And that's really, again, what this ended up being for us was let's just get younger, let's get cheaper, and we should be able to survive this nightmare of a situation that we've been put in as a result of signing uh, the soon-to-be top quarterback in the league to an absolutely outrageous contract. So looking here, midway through the second round, who do we have left on the board? Josh Vance is still there, huh? So let's see, we have Quentin Gordon. Again, with that speed and agility is pretty interesting. We have Josh Vance. I'm surprised he's still on the board. Projected early first rounder. He's fallen quite a bit. He has good speed and agility, just doesn't have the reps. It's pretty surprising. Matthew Mann is also available, as is Casey Briggs and Mr. Richard Sanborn. Right. I think Matthew Mann might be too good to pass up. Although there's a chance that Josh Vance is amazing. And technically, if we're moving out Jawan Bentley as well, when's our next pick? 16th. That's right now. Next pick is 31st. We're taking Josh Vance. Yep, I had a feeling he might be a bit of a swing and a miss, but that does help the linebacker depth a little bit. We were going to have to sign somebody anyway, so it was a risk whenever somebody falls that far, but I don't, I don't totally regret it. I'm just intrigued at who's left. Shaq Owens, Casey Briggs. Let's see, Shaq Owens, eh. Sanborn's still there. Right. Let's go for Richard Sanborn out of Notre Dame. Yikes. Might be for the best to get rid of the rest of these picks. I'm just trying to decide now if it's for the best to move on from certain players. I'm just so worried about the funds. I mean, granted, I could just move on, but what I'm worried about is if bonuses are paid... How much is that going to set me back in terms of funds? And if the answer is a lot, then we're screwed. The wide receiver core is going to be looking okay if we can keep Nikhil Harry. Terrence Abraham I don't really want to get rid of, but I mean it, it would be a way to save money. Even if it's not that much. And then again the O-line... Bit expensive, but it's also tremendous. We gotta move Jawan Bentley at least. The Bears are apparently interested. Can we pick up a third and a fifth? That might be yeah, I had a feeling that was pretty far into their favor, but that's okay. We're never really hurting for draft picks in this series, so it's fine. We already moved out Norris. And it's just Miles Bat Miles Jack and Nikhil Harry as to what we want to get back for them, if anything. Let me look at Nikhil Harry. Contract. Contract, contract. $28 million bonus, huh? Five years left for him. He should be a Patriot for the rest of his career, but we don't know if that's going to be the case. I am a little bit afraid. I don't know what to do. I've literally never been in this situation before, and obviously it's it's tough because we are coming off of such a devastating loss. And now it's okay, well let's also figure this out in the meantime. And it's like, okay, that's that's good. That's fun. Quentin Gordon's still there. We're gonna take this guy. 68 normal. It was a good pick for the time, potentially a kick return specialist. Who else is on the board? Who else? So we have all the fullbacks. It's third round pick Briggs is available. Ricky Briggs. Eh. I think we probably trade down. Probably trade down the next three times. Yeah, 
I don't know if I even want to look for a fullback. There might be somebody better than who we have, but it's a tough call. Yeah, I don't think either of these two are going to be that good. Let's trade down a couple of times in a row. Might as well get rid of these picks. I just hope that we don't get completely screwed by that bonus money. It is a horrifying thought that said bonus money could just completely, completely screw us over if I don't get rid of certain people here. But then if I find out, oh, guess what? You actually didn't have to get rid of those people. Then that's even more devastating. <laughs> So, walking a tightrope because of that goddamn contract to Dawson. And again, I'm not going to be like, yeah, let's trade Dawson because of what happened in the Super Bowl. Like, no, it's just, it is what it is. It fucking sucks, but it is what it is. Let's get rid of this pick two. Fifth and a seventh. Seems to be, nope, fourth round pick from Tampa. Thank you very much to the Bucks. And let's take a look here at who's available in the fourth round. So we have these three fullbacks. Hanson looks like a beast. Gibson at 24. Joey Fredrickson at 22. Damn. You know, I think, uh, I think I like to look at Joey Fredrickson. Well, we're gonna go for Sam Meadows and potentially move him to be a kicker. We're also going to take Joey Fredrickson. So, Fredrickson, welcome. Damn it. I don't think he's better than who we have. I was hoping for a good dev pattern guy. I mean, I've, I've seen superstar fullbacks before, so that was kind of the hope, but you can kind of see by the overalls of everyone else being selected, uh, this draft isn't exactly going to be remembered from, uh, for the amount of depth, as Sam Meadows is horrific. So we could have trouble at the kicker position heading into this next season. So, moment of truth here. Once we get to the preseason, what the hell? Yep, the funds went back up to 62. Did I make the wrong call? Did I make the wrong decision? And are we going to be able to get out from underneath that money total? If not, this is the final season. As crazy as that is. Shit. That's rough, man. Because those bonuses have already been paid. Makes me wonder if we could even move anybody. I don't know if we'll be able to. Well, we technically have $20 million in cap room. Because of this Dawson contract, we are currently under underwater. Regardless, this next season is going to be pretty interesting. <laughs> 